Job come on. Mom, oh my God. I'm so grateful for that job, baby. That's the have something to do more so, I think. Because at first I was kind of getting discouraged a little bit more of not knowing them saying I wasn't able to kind of get a job due to the fact of my background. So it's like a brief supply. Oh, that's good. Yeah, really all Look at Isha. Oh. She was little. She's my teeth. Oh. I know, I saw her. You know what, when she I was little, was... she had a lot of feminine ways. How yeah. many times I had to run to her rescue because people want to mess with her because of how she is. The area that we was in, it was a very rough neighborhood. I'm saying. Yeah. So we had a lot of boys that were very biased to the fact of any gay, open room people yeah, that was that out time, there. Was so at that particular time, yeah. we were very... It was wicked at that, that yeah. time. Yeah, I felt as though what I was going to do, I was going to do. Despite who felt whatever they was going to say about me or how they acted about me or whatever it was going to do to me, I did it, you know, yeah. off the strength of whatever, the consequences that come along the way. So, so I think that that's what really what it was. It was some boys that felt as though they was going to say some things that's out of pocket to me and felt as though they going to treat me the way they want to treat me, and I went off. Oh, what about the time that guy was kicking on your mama though when I was there with y'all? Oh, my God. That situation, it was very, 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 very intense. Who you telling? I had to back him down. I was okay. so scared that man was kicking on that door. Okay. He was like, I'm looking for a girl named Isha, whoever she is, tell her to come out. Mm -hmm. Oh, she ain't coming up out of here. Now, if you want her, you're going to have to go through me. He looked at me up and down, seen that I had my bush knife, and I was standing there like, I was scared, though, but I ain't let him know I was scared. <laughs> okay. You got to live in your own truth. Never worry about what somebody's saying about you. And that's crazy that you say that right there that um, never be worried about what people say about you. I had to learn that concept of, of we being all did. concerned about we what people all thought of me, especially in this lifestyle. That's why I was in a lot of situations I was in, I'm saying, because I always looking at it as how people, what people thought of me, what they said about me. So you done, you done made a big growth, so. Because I remember the times when you be ready to get out immediately. You know, like, when you get comfortable with yourself, baby, can't nobody say nothing. Can't they touch you with a 10 feet pole? That shit would bounce off your fucking chest. Mm -hmm. it, it won't bother you. Cause yeah. people gonna talk. That's, that's 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 what people do. You can't stop people from saying nothing out their mouth. Mm -hmm. You can't control that. It started when I was young in school. I was picked with, teased. I just didn't want to go. And sometimes I just didn't want to go because I knew what I had to deal with going. Everyone kind of always throw it. It's, it's just only a phase. I felt that this wasn't a phase. It was just who I was. This was my truth. I'm in high school. It was a teacher that I got into with. She used to kind of make me feel like what I was doing was wrong. She basically expelled me. I ran across some girls and saying they kind of engaged in exchanging money for sex. And we kind of like did it periodically, you know, to get by because, you know, we didn't come from a silver spoon, you know, we came from kind of like trying to, you know, survive. I was out on the script and a situation occurred with me and this young man. It was basically discrimination that kind of escalated to him striking me in my face. It escalated from one thing to another, and it basically led me to lose my freedom. I was incarcerated for four years without a trial. Pretty good. I am digging the hand. Thank you. <laughs> so, what have you been up to? Um, Where are you staying now? Um, right now, I'm actually in an area that you may not feel comfortable with me. Why are you out there? 
Um, as of right now, because of um, like my mom, like she doesn't stay with us right now, so I kind of take on responsibility as a big sister slash mama role, which is a good thing. But sometimes it kind of be overwhelming because you know bills and you know because it's just a lot of responsibility. I'm not eligible just to kind of like go and apply for an apartment, being as though that I have a felony on my background. This was the letter that came in the mail. It was from me. It was from Amazon. And they had kind of told me, like, my uh, background history kind of, like, gave me a background check of, like, all the current or any, like, cases that I had had. But that was the reason why, I guess, that I was kind of disqualified for the job. And it kind of put me in a standstill again. Um, I can recall that you said that if you had a felony or anything like that, we can kind of go into a scene that if we can kind of get it not expelled but kind of sealed. So I think what you've got here is... Uh is an assortment of obstacles mm -hmm. and it, we can't get rid of all of them but what well, you can get rid of is some of them that'll make the one remaining obstacle a little bit more dealable by the time you get to an employer and you know, when you turn this in you, they're always going to find that felony so oh. but what you can do is when you put, go in and turn the application in, you can say, you know what, I have a felony conviction for aggravated battery on the public way, and that sounds like a really bad thing. I'd like to talk to somebody about it and explain it to them. Hmm. Take a little ownership of that because it is not going to go away, ever. And explain to them that this is not something where I was walking down the street and decided to jump on somebody. Mm -hmm. This is a situation, and then you go into the whole story about what the situation was. Let me ask you one other question. Have you... Uh Love is in the building. So what you been on? What you been doing? Um, yeah, they've been going. Really just trying to stay focused on this book that I'm preparing. Okay, so how is that going? Um, it's going pretty well. It's just a little difficult sometimes. I just hate reliving the story with like you yeah. have to keep reliving it. I'm saying it's kind of like it going you over. Back it. to the emotions that you had when it first happened yeah. and everything like that. But I mean, yeah, you you know, I mean you're a strong person, so I know it's it's gonna be okay. I just think it's kind of it's like being just keep your hope alive. Mm -hmm. And, you know, sometimes, you know, it's hard to kind of do that And then being in the life that we are in, yeah. you know, nowadays, you know, it's slowly but surely being accepted and everything like that, but you still have your flaws in it, so, definitely. you know, you definitely got to be ready for that. But I see you, uh, you've been working at uh, the beauty supply store, right? Because I know you've been wanting to do that for a while, so get into it because it's in well, the area that you like, so. Well, I've been wanting a job jo for a well, long yeah, period yeah. of time. I've <laughs> definitely been wanting a job. Let's put more emphasis on right, that. the job. But um, I got something in the field that I feel like that was more comfortable for me, mm -hmm. I'm saying, and that I think I... relate to. And I feel comfortable doing. You've been to the mini bar before? Have you ever been to one? You should go with us tonight. You should. You sit around and watch a performance, basically. That's right. Yeah. yeah. They vote. That's <laughs> they do this. <laughs> That's called bogey. That's called bogey. Get it right. 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 Oh, yeah. Don't you feel like you deserve a vacation? Right you know, now. Even if it's for like a couple of days, like you know, two days, three days, I'm, I'm gone. And if I like it, I'll be gone all year. I want to go somewhere else. There's a big world out there. I don't want to be here anymore. I don't want to become a casualty. To what? Violence. Yeah. When you bring it to my attention that people were saying that they came to my court appearance saying that, oh, they're going to do this to me and do that to me, I was kind of nervous and fearing for my life. I kind of felt a little safe being behind bars, I'm saying, but what about my family? You know, still, you know. Uh, we had your back out here, though, Isha. Don't even, we had, we had your back out here 100%. Uh, it, it wasn't like, ooh, you see what she did? We was like, man, you heard about that shit? That shit was fucked up. 
and I would have did it too. How do y'all feel? I'm saying like just you being out and you just seeing a lot of the girls. I'm saying it's like you hearing because I was incarcerated. A lot of girls that was kind of like getting killed on the scroll and you know being in the area that that was a place that you worked at on Madison, not too far from that. I'm saying how did you take that? Like you know, because I was, was in jail, kind of shocked. I'm saying not knowing. I'm saying it was okay, crazy because some dude. of them was my friends. Like mm -hmm. Paige was just over our house. She was asking me to color her hair. And she looked just so cute that day, you know what I'm saying? And then, you know, she got she got murdered right behind my house. And then it was just like a slew of 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 like murders going on with the transgender community around that time. Yeah, I ain't gonna lie, your situation definitely opened my eyes up to like a lot of stuff that was going on. And you know the news, they just made it seem like it was just another trans life gone. Yeah. yeah. They kept they made it seem as though when I brought it. situations yeah. you getting into yeah. Yeah. and I've been in those situations where you know when you think back like damn I was too thirsty I let my guard down just a little mm -hmm. bit and then you get into those situations where you have to go into attack mode you know what I'm saying yeah. but it's not the girl's fault these guys really are mentally challenged yeah. Yeah. and it's yeah. so crazy yeah. how they yeah. can yeah. tick and they switch and they make you have to go crazy I've been sexually assaulted in my own home I went through situation of being on the west side. I'm saying that's why I'm from the hood, K-Town. You know, hood girl doing what normal girls do to make the ends meet. But <laughs> I was on the west side, and I had got into it with a young man, I'm saying, you know, that was outside. You know, that kind of, like, didn't like trans girls. I'm saying, you know how they run their mouth. If they just feel yeah. threatening just on our yeah. presence yeah. sometimes. And you be like, I ain't do nothing. But they just want to engage and just going back and forth. Well, you fag is this, that. Yeah. But I think it's more so is they lack of insecurity. Exactly. Because we should, I should, they don't they, understand whenever themselves. I come around, I should <laughs> Threaten your uh, uh, security. Like you gotta you understand, you know, only I ignore somebody for so long. But daddy, pesky and pesky. So that's what right. transpired with me. I basically went into ballistic mode, got in my vehicle, honey, and oh, yes, girl, I literally tried to kill him with my car. I didn't intend to do it. But, but you gotta understand, though, in the, in the moment, it's it you mean. or them. Exactly. And that's what I'm saying. There's plenty of girls have died in the Period. Because, because they didn't get in that mode. Yep. But it's kind of fucked up when you out here, you got to protect yourself. Yeah. And the system not going to be on your side, especially when you in the right. True. Exactly. That's true. true. I have a homegirl from Minnesota. I don't know if you know. Laverne Cox did her story. Her name is Cece. Yes. My niece. That's I'll real. It's actually similarity. That's real. And if she had to fall for her life, she'd be dead. I felt and I believed that I did was right and nothing I did was wrong. And then to come out without any assistance from the government in helping you be rehabilitated. Yeah. And I'm not speaking that on no, give me reparations, my 40 acres and a mule. Give me what's <laughs> the investment that give we done what? put in this country on many levels. And I'm not just talking about racially. <laughs> yeah. I'm talking about from the bottom up, period. I agree. Yeah. It's cold now, girl. Yeah. Wanna go in? Oh, we can. Yeah. <laughs> that's, I mean, that's, that's a wrap. That's a wrap. <laughs> 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 Stop playing with yourself.